The next lesson is on chapter 14, Graphs in Practical Situations. 14.1, Conversion Graphs. Definition, a conversion graph is a graph that shows two quantities that are equivalent together. Then we can change one unit to another. The quantity can be between anything but some of the common ones are miles and kilometers. The next lesson is on the next the next lesson is on chapter fourteen graphs in practical situations. Fourteen point one conversion graphs. Definition a conversion graph is a graph that shows two quantities that are equivalent together. Then we can change one unit to another. The quantity can be between anything, but some of the common ones are miles and kilometers, pounds and dollars, or liters and gallons. Example, uh, look at the graph. How many pins are in 2.2 liters? The answer is 3.8 pins because 3.8 pins are approximately equivalent to 2.2 liters. Same with how many liters are in 5.3 pins? 3 liters because, well, 3 liters are approximately equivalent to 5.3 pins. Lastly, Approximately how many pins are equivalent to 1 liters? Simple, just take 5.3 divided by 3 and we got 1.8 pins. Travel graph. First definition. A travel graph gives information about how far something or someone has traveled in a given time period. It also called distant time graph. The average speed formula is calculated by the total distance traveled and divided by the total time taken. We have an example. The first question, what can you say about point B? If you look at the graph, you can see that the person has traveled 3 meters in 5 seconds. Second question, find its greatest speed. The answer is 2 meters per second. To do this, first spot the steepest slope, then calculate the distance traveled and divide it by the time taken. Lastly, find its average speed during the whole journey. Just take 12 divided by 14 and you got 0.9 meters per second. Rather than distant time graph, you also have speed time graphs. In a speed time graph, a horizontal line shows that the object is moving at a constant speed. A straight line going up shows the constant acceleration of the object, and if it goes down, it's the constant deceleration of the object. The area between the line and the x-axis gives the distant travel. Below is a picture of a distant time graph being converted to a speed time graph. From a straight line going up, it turns into a horizontal line, showing that the object is moving at a constant speed. We have another example. The speed time graph shows a car accelerating for 40 seconds and then decelerating. As shown in the graph, the maximum speed of the car is 20 meters per second. The initial acceleration is calculated by the final speed minus the initial speed and then over a period of time. It is 0.5 meter per second squared. The deceleration for the second part of the journey is 0 minus 20 over 20 is minus 1 meter per second squared. The distance traveled is 40 times 60 divided by 2 is 1200 meter. So as shown in the graph, we have to calculate the area of the triangle. The average speed of the whole journey is 1,200 divided by 60 is 20 meters per second. Last but not least, curve graphs. So to find the speed at a point in the curve distance time graph, 
you have to draw a tangent to the line at the point. Choose two other points on the tangent that are clear to see the coordinate. Calculate the gradient of tangent. The gradient is the speed at that point. You have to remember, because this value is found by drawing a tangent on the graph, it will be an approximate answer because the tangent is not specific. For a speed time graph that is a curve, you can find the acceleration in a similar way. So we have an example for it. You have to draw a tangent and then take two points on it. You then have to find the gradient of tangent, which is the difference between the y's over the difference between the axis of the two points. In this situation, it is 15.5 over 2, which is 7.75. So the speed is 7.75 meter per second. And finally, thank you for listening, and that's all for chapter 11 and chapter 14.